Hey friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. Today we have a really exciting kitchen day planned. I got these beautiful vanilla beans in the mail just the other day and I wish that you could smell them through the camera because they smell amazing. These beans are delicious and fresh. I got eight ounces of vanilla beans and I've got all kinds of projects planned for them today. We're going to start by making vanilla extract, which is, you know, pretty much the classic vanilla recipe. It's easy. It's not even really a recipe. It's pretty much the easiest thing you can imagine. We are also going to make some vanilla sugar. And finally, we're going to be trying something, or we're going to be making something that I'm going to be trying for the very first time, but I'm so excited to try, and that is vanilla paste. So we're going to start off with our vanilla extract, which is, as I said, super easy. So I've got eight ounces of vanilla beans here. I'm going to make a quart of vanilla extract, and for that, I'm going to need half of these vanilla beans. So we need four ounces of vanilla beans. Roughly the accepted ratio that you use for vanilla extract is one ounce of vanilla beans to one cup of vodka. Now, if you look on Pinterest or just do an internet search, you might find all kinds of ratios recommended. Probably a lot of them are going to tell you you really only need a couple of vanilla beans in a cup of alcohol. But honestly, if you do that, you're probably most likely not going to be fully satisfied with the flavor of your homemade vanilla. It's going to be more like a vanilla infused alcohol you know, which can taste really nice, but not really what you want when you're looking for a nice rich vanilla flavor for baked goods. So we are going to use about an ounce of beans to a cup of alcohol. Um, it's going to actually be slightly stronger than that, you know, which is not a bad thing, because once I get the beans in here, I'm not going to be able to fit a full four cups of alcohol into this cork jar. So I'm just going to empty my vanilla beans out onto this plate here, and we're going to estimate about half of them for our extract. Now, I just wanna take a minute to appreciate the beauty of these beans. This is a really thick, long, delicious vanilla bean. I mean, you can tell this is plump and meaty, and if you are used to buying vanilla beans on a place like Amazon or even at your local grocery store, they probably, honestly, don't look much like this. The first couple times I made vanilla extract, I just, I just bought beans on Amazon or, like I said, at my local grocery store, and I didn't know any better. I was perfectly happy with them. But then I found this vanilla bean co-op on Facebook. I'll link that below. It's a, it's basically a group. It's basically a co-op where you buy as a group and because of that you get a great deal. So I'll link that in case that's anything you're interested in. But just wanted to mention these beans. So because the size of vanilla beans can vary so much, we want to measure by weight, not by number. So I'm gonna estimate out about half of these. So that looks pretty equal. So into my quart jar, I'm gonna put half of these beans. Now you can see some of them are a little bit long, stick up over the edge of the jar, and I don't want to fill this jar completely to the top with vodka anyway. So what I'm going to do is with some of the longer ones, I'm just going to tie them in a really loose knot like this. That's going to keep them submerged under the alcohol. Now you may notice that I am not splitting my vanilla beans. That is kind of a controversial thing. Depending on who you ask, you're going to get different opinions about that. And it probably is true that if you split your vanilla beans, you are more likely to get a more full-bodied, richer extract in a shorter amount of time. So if that's what you're going for, feel free to split your beans. What I like to do is keep my beans whole, or at least keep the majority of them whole, because what that does is that preserves the caviar, which the basically the vanilla bean seeds inside the vanilla, and that allows you to use it later in a different recipe. So this is technically more beans than I need for this amount of alcohol because as I said, we're not going to be filling it to the top, so we're not going to be using a full four cups, four or four ounces of beans. So what that means, I'm going to have a couple extra vanilla beans in here. I can take those out and use them for different recipes along the way. Basically, by making the extract, we're going to be submerging these beans in alcohol, which is going to preserve them. Now, any beans that I don't have split, if I want to use them in a recipe later, I can just pull it out and I can snip the top off, and then I can just go ahead and squeeze all that vanilla bean caviar out into my recipe. So that's the reason why I like to leave mine whole, but that's completely personal preference. You may find that you prefer to split them. I like to... I like to get the maximum possible use out of these vanilla beans. Even though, as I said, I got these, at, I got them at a great deal, they're still, even if you get an amazing deal in vanilla beans, they're still not cheap. And you want to get as much of that amazing vanilla flavor as you can. So, 
Enough chit chat about that. Let's add some alcohol to these beans and get them extracting. So for making vanilla extract, you'll usually want about 80 proof alcohol. Now you may notice here, if you're familiar with vodka brands at all, I admittedly am really not. This is a very cheap brand. I am not, I don't want to spend the money on something really expensive and fancy. While it's possible you might get a little bit of a smoother flavor that way, I'm going to be using these in baked goods. The alcohol is going to cook off anyway, so I'm not really concerned with the alcohol flavor as much. Because of that, I use a really cheap vodka. And if you want to use a more expensive one, go for it. That's completely personal preference as well. Now, I did mention that we want to use 80 proof vodka for this extract. This is actually 100 proof vodka. Basically that means instead of 40% alcohol, this is 50% alcohol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute it with a little bit of water to bring it down to 80 proof. Basically for every cup of alcohol that I add, I'm going to add about a quarter cup water to dilute it down and that should bring it down to about 80 proof. So I'm gonna start with I think two cups and we'll see how much we have in here. Looks like we're gonna have just about two cups. Almost exactly, just slightly under. So I'm gonna start by adding the two cups into our beans here. I'm going to measure out about half a cup of water and add that also. So that was all that I had left of the 100 proof vodka. I'm just going to top this off with 80 proof just to get the level up to the top of the beans. All right, perfect. I'm just going to cover this with a little double thickness of plastic wrap and that's going to allow me to shake this regularly without damaging the lid. I don't want the alcohol to come in contact with the lid here. So this is ready to go into the cabinet and extract. I'm going to shake it as often as I remember, which ideally would be close to every day. It's, it's not going to be every day. It'll probably be whenever I open that cabinet. What I am also going to do is I am going to label this with what it is, obviously vanilla extract. I'm going to label it with today's date. I'm also going to mention on my label the type of vanilla beans that these are. These are a Madagascar bourbon vanilla bean, which is pretty much the most common vanilla bean that you'll find. It's the really classic vanilla flavor. If you get vanilla extract from the grocery store, it's most likely made with Madagascar bourbon beans. Now bourbon in that name doesn't have anything to do with the alcohol. That's talking about the way the beans are cured. You can also get Madagascar beans cured in a different way. I actually have some Madagascar Mexican cured beans growing into extract in my cabinet right now too, which I'm really excited to try. So these are Madagascar bourbon. I'm going to label them as I said, otherwise I'll get them confused with all the other vanilla extracts I have going in there. Now, one other thing that I want to mention that's probably going to be a little bit controversial is the amount of time you're supposed to let this extract. Again, if you look on Pinterest or just do an internet search, you'll find, you'll find estimates all over the place. A lot of people will say as short as four to six weeks, but honestly, I have not found good results with that short of time. Partly that's probably because, as I said, I don't split my beans because I like to get the maximum use out of them possible. But even, even if you do split your beans, it's really better to wait close to a year to actually try your vanilla extract. And that sounds like an impossible amount of time to wait when you smell the vanilla beans and you just wanna try it right away. It's very challenging to wait that is one of the reasons we're going to use the other half of our vanilla beans and we're going to make them into vanilla paste today. Vanilla paste doesn't, really you can use it right away. A lot of people say that the flavor improves if you let it sit about a month or so, but it's a whole lot easier to wait a month than it is to wait a year. Another thing that I like to do is when I open my new bottle of vanilla extract, you know, in a year or so when I start using this one, I'm going to immediately start another bottle. That way, you know, I'll go through this in, I'll probably go through this in a little bit less than a year. But if I start one right away and I have multiple bottles brewing at the same time, then I'm not going to have to wait again. It's basically the first time you make your vanilla extract. As long as you get into the cycle of making it regularly, you're not going to have to wait that year again. So let's set this to the side. I'm going to put it in my cabinet out of direct sunlight and I'm going to show you what else we're going to do with our delicious vanilla beans. Now, while we're on the topic of getting the maximum use possible out of everything, I also want to mention this baggie that my vanilla beans shipped in smells heavenly. Smells like vanilla beans, you know, unsurprisingly. So I'm going to actually put this in one of my dresser drawers 
to kind of perfume my clothes a little bit. I think that, I mean, it's got that amazing vanilla scent. I don't want to waste it. So I'm going to set that to the side. We'll do that. And I want to show you these beans, which at first glance are not really going to look like much. So these are beans that I pulled out of my finished extract. I actually pulled these out a couple days ago. I did take a couple video clips when I pulled these out of their extract a few days ago so that I could show you what they look like when they freshly came out. So these beans had been extracting in the extract for a little over a year. The extract was used up. I had just been keeping a little bit of alcohol in them just to keep them from spoiling until I got a chance to do something else with them. So I wanted these to dry and I also wanted the caviar exposed. So I pulled these out of the extract. I split them open and then I scraped the caviar. You can see I made a nice little pile of caviar here. Now these beans are done extracting. We couldn't really use them to get more extract, at least not with that rich flavor, but these will be great for making vanilla sugar. So I have here a couple quart size mason jars. I'm just going to take these beans and I'm going to split them up between the two jars. These are brittle. As I said, they've been drying for a few days, so I can crack them right in half. The other thing I want to do here is split up this pile of caviar. I'm going to spoon that as equally as I can between the two jars as well. Next, what I want to do is fill both of these jars with sugar, and we're going to let all that's left of that delicious vanilla flavor infuse into the sugar. I realize I'm actually pretty low on sugar, so I'm going to refill this. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I've got a full canister of sugar now, so I'm just going to use my canning funnel. I'm just going to fill up these jars. Projects like this are a great way to reuse those old canning jars. You know, technically you're only supposed to use them once for canning, but I can use them again for projects like this. So now you can see there's little bits of vanilla. There's the caviar that we put in there and the vanilla beans. We're just gonna go ahead and shake this up. I want to try to break up those vanilla bean caviar clumps and get it evenly distributed. So you can see all those little beautiful black specks in this vanilla sugar here. Now, we're going to let this infuse for a few weeks, and before I use it, I'm going to want to take out the vanilla beans. We want to, we want to leave that caviar in there. I mean, that'd be impossible to get out anyway. But I have heard a lot of people say that once you take the vanilla beans out, the sugar will eventually gradually lose its vanilla flavor. So I like to leave the beans in there until I'm actually ready to use the sugar. The first few times I use it, I may just, I may just kind of work around the vanilla beans and not actually worry about taking them out. Now, as far as using this sugar, you can use this sugar just like you'd use any other sugar. You can use it in baking if you want to make extra special cookies or something like that. What I like to do is save this for the special finishing touches. So if I'm making something, say like snickerdoodles or something like that, where you roll the cookies in a cinnamon sugar mixture, I'll use this vanilla sugar instead of the regular sugar because at that point you're really highlighting that vanilla flavor. Also, another great idea is to use this sugar to sprinkle on top of creme brulee something like that. So something where it's like a finishing sugar, where it's really going to be highlighted is where I use this. But I mean, if you've got tons of vanilla sugar and you just want to use it in your regular baking to make cookies, go for it. That would just really take your cookies to the next level. So I'm going to set these jars aside. These are going to infuse, I mean, really you can use them whenever the vanilla flavor is to your liking. I'm going to let them infuse for at least a few weeks before I use them. So another super easy project done. Let's get started on our vanilla paste. So two really easy vanilla projects down, one more to go. This is the one that I've never made before, vanilla paste. I'm really excited to try it, but as I said, I've never made it before, so we're going to find out how it goes together. Now, you're not really supposed to do this when you make a recipe the first time, but I am going to make a couple changes to it. I'll fill you in on what those changes are as I make it, so that if you want to try the original, you can go ahead and do that instead. 
Now, in the vanilla bean group on Facebook that I'm in, in addition to buying all those beans at great discounts, they, a lot of people also like to share recipes. So the recipe that I'm going to be using today is called the Alex Green Vanilla Paste Recipe. I think that Alex Green was the person who wrote this recipe or the first person who shared it. So that's the recipe that I'm going to be trying today. It's a very popular recipe in the group. So let's give it a try. So this recipe is measured by weight instead of volume. We're going to measure all of this right into our blender because ultimately we're going to be blending up all the ingredients together. So he recommends just sticking your blender right on your kitchen scale and weighing everything from there as you add it. So I have these four ounces of vanilla beans remaining. What I'm going to do, some of the tips are actually a little bit stiff. So what I'm going to do is whenever I have a dry tip, I'm going to cut that off and I'm going to add that into my vanilla extract jar because for extracting purposes that won't matter. And then the remaining beans we'll cut into about three pieces and stick them right in the blender. So I'll just collect the tips right on this tray here. So as I tip the beans, I'll take the remaining parts and cut them up and put them right in the blender. Now I want to mention as I'm cutting these, you'll notice that the entire vanilla bean pot is going right into the blender. We're not putting the caviar in. I mean, we are putting the caviar in, but we're not separating it from the pot. It's, I think it's kind of a common misconception that most of the vanilla bean flavor is actually in the caviar, when in fact most of it is actually in the vanilla bean pot. Now, as they extract, the caviar will pick up notes of that delicious vanilla flavor and become just as delicious. But if I were to just take plain unextracted caviar and eat it, it wouldn't really have that much of a flavor compared to the rich vanilla flavor you get from the pot itself. So we want to make sure that we get all of that goodness into our vanilla bean paste. So since I'm weighing out these beans, I can tell I put slightly more than half of the beans into my vanilla extract. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to pull two of these beans out and add them into my paste to make sure I have enough to make a whole recipe. While I've got this open, we're going to add all these little tips we cut off right into our extract. And actually, I realized I should have left that open because I'm cutting the tips off these too, and those will go back in as well. So next into our blender, along with our vanilla beans, I need to add six ounces of water. I'm going to actually start out with a little bit less than that. I'm going to start with three ounces of water and see if that allows it to blend up properly. If not, then I'll add the other three ounces afterwards. So uh, the reason I'm adding slightly less water to start with is because I, I'm hoping to have a little bit of a thicker paste. So I can always add the rest in afterwards if, if three ounces isn't enough. All right, went ever so slightly over 3.14 ounces, but that'll be fine. So next I need to add 16 ounces of granulated sugar. That is quite a bit of sugar, and that is one difference between this paste and vanilla extract. Vanilla extract is not sweetened. Now 16 ounces does sound like quite a bit, and honestly I'm not really sure what to expect from this, because as I said, I've never made it before. But when it comes to using vanilla paste in an actual recipe, you basically can substitute it one for one with vanilla extract. Um, we'd be using such a small amount, maybe a teaspoon or so, maybe a little more because honestly, who doesn't love a little extra vanilla? But it's not like we're going to be using cups of this. So I think the extra sugar added into it, I don't think will, I don't think it's going to negatively affect um, anything that we have at all. And that's gonna make it really delicious for adding to something like some cream to put in your coffee. All right. So we're close to 16 ounces, I need just a little more. Okay, there we go. The next ingredient that we need is 12 ounces of alcohol. He recommends either vodka or light rum. 
So I'm going to start with this alcohol here. This isn't quite vanilla extract, it's a little bit milder than that, but this is the alcohol that I had those beans soaking in, the ones that we just put in the vanilla sugar. I had them soaking in this to prevent spoilage. So it did extract a little bit of their vanilla flavor. We're going to start with this and then I'm going to top the rest of it off with some 80 proof vodka. So just under an ounce of that. I am going to pour my vodka into this measuring cup first so that I can slowly add it and make sure that I don't add too much all at once. And that's only three and a half ounces, so I wasn't in any danger of over measuring. Add a little more. So this alcohol in here is really going to pull the flavor out of the beans. It's also going to preserve this and make this a shelf stable product. So next I'm supposed to add two ounces of light corn syrup, which is not the same as high fructose corn syrup, but it's still something that I prefer to avoid as much as possible. So I am going to experiment by adding honey instead. He does mention in his recipe that if you use something different, say honey, maple syrup, you want some sort of liquidy sweetener like that. But he does say that it might be a little more prone to crystallization. Honestly, I'm not that concerned about it. If it does crystallize, I'll just warm it up gently and that will decrystallize the honey. But I just wanted to mention that because if you want your product, if, if not crystallizing is important to you, then you probably want to follow the recipe as written and use corn syrup instead. So I'm going to instead add two ounces of honey. So as I said, I've never made this recipe before, but I have successfully substituted honey in a lot of other recipes. So we'll see how it stands the test of time, but I think at least initially, I think that this will be a fine substitute. So I've got all these ingredients measured in our blender. I am just going to go ahead and blend them up. Now you are supposed to use a high powered blender for this. The Vitamix is what's most commonly recommended. I don't have a Vitamix, but this is a pretty good blender. So I am going to try it out and we'll see how, how it goes. If you use a cheaper blender, what can happen is because the vanilla bean pods are a little bit fibrous, you might end up with just some little fibers in your vanilla bean paste that may make for not the most appealing texture. So what people do in that situation, if all you have is a cheap blender and you want to use that, what I have seen people recommend to do is to then, once you've blended everything up, let your paste sit for about a month or so and those fibers will start to soften in the alcohol and all the other ingredients and then re-blend it again after that month. And then after that, people like to put it through a fine mesh strainer just to get any remaining fibers out. I am going to see how well my blender does as I said, it's not the most high-end blender, but it's a pretty decent one. So if it does a good enough job, I won't have to go through that process of re-blending and straining. If I do have to do that, then I'm not really concerned about it. I don't think it's a big deal. We will do that if we need to, because I want to make sure that we have the best texture possible. So we're going to gradually bring this blender up to high speed. Let me turn it to a low setting to start. So once we get this up to full speed, we're supposed to let it run for two minutes and then we want to verify that the vanilla bean pod pieces are broken down into flecks as small as the vanilla caviar. So a very fine texture. So I'm going to run this for two minutes. I'll meet you back here. When we're done, I'll spare you having to listen to and watch the blender for two minutes. I'll meet you back here and we'll take a look at how it turned out. So you can see it looks nice and rich and thick. To get the true flavor of this paste, you are supposed to let it sit for at least a month and let the flavors melt, but of course we have to give it a little taste test now. That is really good. It's got a little bit of an alcohol flavor, which I think will mellow with time. Honestly, I think a lot of that is probably because I left out those additional three ounces of water. So I think that this seems well blended enough. 
I don't know if you can see on the spoon, just the size of the flecks there. They're really small. So I think that it seems well blended enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for a month. At the end of that month, I'm going to test it again. Probably I'll try using it in a drink or something where you'd really be able to tell if, if the flecks were not small enough. And then at that point, if it needs to be blended again and strained, at that point, I'll go ahead and do it. All right, so let's get our paste jarred up here. You can see how nice and rich and thick that looks. This recipe is supposed to make about a quart. Ours probably made slightly less because as I said, I did leave out about three ounces of water. Although honestly, it seems pretty close. So I'm gonna get as much of this out of here as I can. Now, as you can see, this blender has little bits of vanilla goodness all over it. We are not going to waste that. I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit more to drip into our jars. Um, doesn't really want to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of cream to this blender. I'm going to shake it up because I don't want to turn it into whipped cream. And that's going to be our coffee creamer for the next few days. We're gonna make sure we don't waste any of this deliciousness. Another thing you could do is if you have this you know, this delicious residue left in your blender, you could also make a smoothie and that would really infuse your smoothie with a lot of vanilla deliciousness too. So I am really happy at first glance with this vanilla paste here. So as I said for using this, you can substitute it one for one, replace vanilla extract that's called for in a recipe with this vanilla paste. One thing I do want to mention, I probably actually should have mentioned it when we we're still blending this up, there is, one recipe, there is one ingredient that I omitted from this recipe and that is xanthan gum. The purpose of the xanthan gum is to slightly thicken your paste and most importantly to keep the, the vanilla bean bits, the vanilla caviar evenly suspended throughout the mixture. I opted to leave that out and what I'm going to do instead is I'm just gonna keep an eye on this and before I use it, I may need to give it a little bit of a stir just to make sure that everything is evenly incorporated. Honestly, that's not really a big deal to me so I am going to do that. All right, so let's make up some delicious coffee creamer. I'm going to see if I can get this to incorporate just by shaking it because as I said, I don't really want to make whipped cream. If it doesn't really seem to be getting it all, then I will, I'll turn it on just for a second. So there we go. So there we go. I think it might be time for an afternoon cup of coffee. So I'm gonna let this vanilla bean paste sit for about a month before I actually try using it. And then I'm going to probably try, as I said, I'll probably try some sort of drink. Maybe try putting a little bit in my coffee directly. And I'll try baking with it and one of the most common ways that is a good way to test if your vanilla extract is done, and I am assuming that it would also be a good way to test your vanilla bean paste, is to make whipped cream and just put maybe a teaspoon of the vanilla bean extract or the paste into your whipped cream. If you taste it directly when it comes to extract, when you taste it directly out of the jar, a lot of times it's not going to give you the full flavor because the flavor of the vanilla is going to be competing with the flavor of the alcohol. So. If you dilute it properly by putting it in whipped cream or something else like that, then you can get the actual flavor of the vanilla coming through and know what it's actually going to taste like when you use it. So I know I said three recipes for you today, which is what we're going to be making today, but I just wanted to mention one more little tip, which is this is my old batch of vanilla sugar. So I'm just going to show you how dry and brittle these beans are. They've been in this sugar for quite a long time, probably over a year. What you can do when you use up your vanilla sugar, take those beans out and you can put them in a spice grinder, a coffee grinder, something like that, and turn them into vanilla bean powder. You want to make sure that they are completely dry because they won't powder up if they're not completely dry like this. But then that vanilla bean powder will still have some of that vanilla flavor in it. You can use that in baked goods. Um, you don't really want to use it in something liquid because it's not really going to dissolve. But you could mix it into brownies or cake or something like that and it's just gonna add a really like an extra layer of vanilla essence to your baked goods and just really make them pop. Now, as I said, those vanilla beans, they're an investment and we want to make sure that we get the absolute most out of all of these vanilla beans possible. So 
My motto is never throw away a vanilla bean, never compost it. There's always something else you can do with it until it's completely gone. So hopefully this was a fun kitchen day for you guys. I know it was fun for me. I am really going to enjoy testing out all these vanilla products as they age, as they kind of mellow out and finish. As I said, the benefit of making something like the vanilla sugar and the vanilla paste is that you don't have to wait a year for those to be done like you do with the extract because it is hard to get those beautiful beans in the mail and not be able to enjoy anything with them right away. So the sugar will be done in a few weeks, the vanilla bean paste will be done in a few weeks, about a month or so, and then we can go ahead and start enjoying those right away. And then in about a year, we will test out our vanilla extract and see how that is. So thank you so much for hanging out with me in the kitchen today. I had a lot of fun making these vanilla products and making my house smell amazing. And I had a lot of fun especially making the vanilla paste, which is something that I've never made before. But it was so easy. I know I changed the recipe a little bit, but as of right now, I am still really happy with how it came out. So I definitely encourage you to give vanilla a try. It is really easy, a little bit addictive, and definitely delicious. So if you're interested in seeing how we use all these different vanilla products in my kitchen, definitely stick around and we will have lots of fun baking videos coming up over the winter months. So I hope you're having a great day and I can't wait to see you soon. I'll see you next time. So I just want to mention here as I guess kind of a little blooper, you can see there's some clumpiness in this vanilla sugar here. I didn't realize when I added the sugar initially to one of those jars that I guess there was a little bit of water residue at the bottom of the jar. So for that one, I just dumped all the contents out into this baking dish here. I'm just going to loosely cover this and allow that moisture to evaporate. Because this is sugar, it's not going to go bad. I just need to let the moisture evaporate and break up the clumps. Once it's completely dry, we'll put it back into the jar to finish infusing and this should be completely fine. Mm -hmm.